Hello good morning students please subscribe the channel drop a like share and comment today's transcription number 411 of sir kailash chandra's volume number 19 on the speed of 100 words per minute start in rising to speak on the budget one would naturally extend one's good wishes to the new finance minister for his heroic efforts in tackling a situation which was both difficult and complicated it is not my intention to go into the details of the budget or even to touch upon various matters of policy concerning it I would only like to refer to a few important aspects of the various problems which have arisen on consideration of the budget. Personally speaking, I welcome the decision of the finance minister to take a comprehensive view of both the revenue account and the capital budget account in assessing the correct financial position of the country but i cannot congratulate him in the matter in which he proposes to meet the deficit in the capital budget account the net result of what he proposes to do will be to reduce the cash balances to about rupees 42 crores so far as taxation is concerned my honorable friend spoke with considerable hesitation because i know much of what he was saying he did not mean but so far as the taxation program is concerned it does hit the middle and the poor people the proportion of indirect taxation has come to nearly 60% none knows better than the finance minister that the normal distribution between direct and indirect taxation in any progressive country would be about 50-50 the darkest spot in the budgets is that we are almost reaching the end of our resources if i could think aloud there is the possibility of the death duty being imposed but that matter has been shelved i know there are difficulties you may impose a land tax throughout the country you may reinvoke the salt duty though there may be sentimental objection to that you have followed the policy of prohibition in trying to pursue an ideal which has landed you in disaster in many of the states and in the entire economy of the whole country government has taken advantage of many windfalls government was entitled to it just as it has suffered under the impact of many natural calamities if we look at our increased revenue from exports the finance minister rightly pointed out in his speech that one should not try to depend on these large exports they are due to the worsening of the international situation so far as stockpiling is concerned i would like to know from the finance minister whether government has any plan for stockpiling in the interests of india supposing war breaks out and the situation worsens it will be necessary for government to depend on many vital things which the country itself does not produce 
I did not discover in the budget any plan for spending any money for a planned stockpiling in the interest of India's national economy. I do not know if there are any secret plans going on which the finance minister has not disclosed. I shall now refer to the Indo-Pak agreement. I will not go into details at the present moment. I may have time to do so in the course of the discussion on demands for grants. But, Frankly speaking, so far as this agreement is concerned, nothing could have been more humiliating for India than the manner in which this agreement was effected. If India wanted to have such an agreement, India could have made it long ago on much better terms and saved a lot of humiliation and misery to millions of people. But India deliberately wanted to pursue a particular line of policy which was consistent with our national interest and overnight that policy was changed. Whether it was due to far-sighted or short-sighted statesmanship or due to defeatism or cowardice, I do not know. But it has left a bad taste in the mouths of all because the country feels that it has been let down by its government. So far as the economic policy of the government is concerned, I hope we shall have an opportunity of discussing this matter when the details of the budget will be taken up. But food, cloth and shelter are the three main things on which government's failure is colossal and on which the country expects a new lead from the government if it is to function with the willing confidence and cooperation of the people. Today, we are living in very difficult circumstances. I have no desire merely to blame the government or accuse the government because we are trying to solve a problem of a magnitude which perhaps has had no parallel in any other part of the world. But the way in which government is pursuing its policy is not the way in which a solution will be found. Somehow, the gap between the government and the people is increasing rapidly day by day. It is no use government blaming the activities of particular groups. There may be such parties who may create trouble.